Hi guys, welcome back and welcome to a long overdue update to the HK 132nd scale Lancaster. It's been three months since I posted my last video about this kit, although actually it seems longer than that. But hopefully now I'm going to push through to the end and get this done in the next, uh, next few weeks. So if you saw my previous videos, you will know that I have built the engines and I decided that I would have the part engines closed up and the starboard engines open and I attached those engines to the wings I built up the whole tail plane I used the air scale instrument panel to replace the kit instrument panel and then I painted and I detailed the interior and I was trying to decide between using the opaque fuselage half and the transparent half and in the end I decided to use the transparent half and this is how I left the Lancaster at the end of the last video. So in this video I'm going to get the entire of the exterior painted in camouflage and I'm going to put the fuselage halves together. So one of the things that I need to do on the transparent halves is paint them on the inside and the outside. So I need to paint them green on the inside and black on the outside. And obviously I really want to go uh, around the back of panels like this uh, instrument panel here, this engineer's panel, because I don't really want to the back of that to be uh, exposed to the outside, it looks a little bit ugly. So I put down some Tamiya masking tape based on the diagrams that I drew in the last video, just to mark the rough boundaries of the painted edge, and then I will put the curves in using blue tack. And of course if I then flip that to the inside, I can make sure the mask on the inside corresponds with the masking on the outside. And then you can see here I've done the same thing on the rear of the fuselage, the longer piece. I've left a little gap above the wing there because I think that would just look a little bit better. Anything below this tape is going to be painted black. And then here around the door, I decided that rather than the door in, in a clear piece of plastic, I would go up and around the door. And then a similar thing around the rear spar as well because those uh, two uh, insertion points for the tail, I don't really want to uh, be exposed to the outside. I want to cover those up. So anything below this tape is going to be black. And then you can see here, once I've added uh, the curves with the blue tack and then the rest of the uh, masking tape, you get a much better idea of what's going to be painted. And at the top here, I've left a little bit of an area to be painted as well, just because I don't want that razor straight edge where the two fuselage halves uh, meet. I want to have a little bit of a, a wavy line there. And so here you can see the result of that. I actually gave it a matte coat as well just to um, protect it a little bit while the masking was still on. Obviously I don't want to fog the clear parts. It's come out quite well. You can see there's a, a few bits and pieces um, that need tidying up. And uh, the bombardier's area needs to be uh, painted black on the inside as well. You can see there's an area here that needs to be tidied up as well a little bit. But overall, not too bad. And here is the rear. I'm also quite happy with the way this came out. And on the inside you can see the green nicely lines up with the black. There's a few areas there again that need to be touched up a little bit. And you can see as the two halves go together that is starting to look quite nice. I'm quite happy with these results. Although not with my lighting on the camera. And of course one thing I need to do before I put these two pieces together is really clean this plastic because it has actually got a few fingerprints on it now. And so on to painting the camouflage. I painted everything in black previously. Obviously the Lancaster is black uh, underneath. And I've always had a little bit of trouble with Tamiya curved masking tape. I find it works fine on the outside of curves like this. But when it comes to uh, being on the inside of a curve, I find even if you make little slits on the outside there to help it bend, it doesn't quite go down uh, as well as I'd like. And I don't want the tape to come off while I'm airbrushing. So actually what I remembered in the end is that I've actually got uh, some sheets of Tamiya uh, masking tape, some A5 sheets, actually they're a little bit bigger than A5, and I decided just to use that to help mask the camouflage. So I basically copied this from the instruction booklet and some reference photos, and that nicely goes down there. And of course if I keep the other half, then I can use that when it comes to putting the green down. I'm going to put the RAF Dark Earth down first, and you can see that it gives a decent pattern there in the middle.
So I use my circle cutter just to cut a, a piece of paper into the size of the insignia. Uh, just really because there's not a lot of point in putting paint down there. Um, I'm going to put a white base down there underneath the round doors anyway. So looking at various reference photos, it seems that Lancaster's vary in terms of um, where the horizontal split is between the black and the camo pattern. Most Lancasters seem to have a little line of camouflage below the cockpit window, uh, but by no means all of them. I've just picked an arbitrary position for mine with a mill or so of space below the cockpit and then just taken that straight back uh, with the masking tape there. After a little bit of research and the um, Airfix 172nd scale Spitfire I made recently, I decided on the Vallejo Air um, dark earth colour and so I put that down. You can see it's here and if we remove the tape it actually turned out quite well. I was quite happy with this result and in fact you can see the only part where there's a slight blur is where I actually did use the Tamiya uh, white curve tape rather than the actual uh, masking tape sheet but that's fine that will be fixed when I do the other side and here is the starboard wing these two straight lines here are nothing to worry about the rounder will go over that spot so all of that will be painted over in white and then obviously the, the blue and the red so overall I'm pretty happy with the way that the tail and the wings have come out. And here you can see the fuselage. And again, I'm quite happy with that. I've managed to make the paint thin enough just to have a little bit of uh, the black showing through for a little bit of tonal variation. And when I match the wing up to the fuselage, I'm quite happy with the way that the camo pattern continues from the top of the fuselage down onto the wing. I think that's going to look quite good once it's uh, finished. And then for applying the green, it was really just a case of putting the opposite side of the masking sheet on there. So this is the right tail section. And just trying to align it properly with the edges. There's bound to be a tiny, tiny little bit of overlap, but that can be touched up later. Okay, and here we are. Here is the wing with the brown and green camo down. And I'm really pleased with the way this has turned out. Uh, there's a couple of minor pieces that need touching up, but nothing... Uh, really really serious. These two black marks here on the left hand side are nothing to worry about whatsoever. The insignia is going to go here. Um, the roundels are roughly the size of this Tamiya tape and as you can see that's going to get covered up completely by the white and then the, uh, the roundel on top. And I think once we put these propellers on Yeah, this looks really nice. This is definitely starting to look like a Lancaster now. Or a Lancaster wing, rather. Very happy the way this turned out. Now, in terms of weathering, these are the uh, wheel bay doors. I'm not going to do much weathering on the aircraft until I put everything together, but pieces like this, which will be difficult to access, this is the bomb bay door, some nice rivet detail in there. These pieces I'm going to weather before I actually add them to the main model. And the same here for the uh, undercarriage. I'm going to add some streaking grime here as well, just to, uh, to weather that up before I put it onto the actual wing. So in the next video, I'm going to put down the roundels and the insignia, and I'm going to do that before I actually put the fuselage together. Here are the kit decals. They're very nice, but they are quite large, and I don't think any large decals are going to go down as nicely as paint. So I'm quite tempted to actually make my own stencils and actually paint those roundels. Now obviously I'll probably have to use things like the uh, walkway stencils. I'm not sure about these lines yet. I might paint them or I might just use the kit decals. So the kit gives three options for markings. This is the first one. This is R5868 uh, in its original squadron code. And actually this is the same aircraft as option B, which is S for sugar. Same serial number. And the significant thing about this aircraft is that it flew 137, although some sources say 139, uh, combat missions. And this aircraft today is at the Royal Air Force Museum in Hendon. And this is the third and final option. This is um, W4783 from the Royal Australian Air Force, uh, based at RAF Binbrook. And this aircraft, I think, today is in the Australian War Memorial in uh, Canberra. And according to the sources I read, this aircraft flew 89 combat missions. However, I don't think I'm going to use any of these options. Uh, the aircraft I'm going to paint is going to be Lancaster ND 911, 
And as a result of that, in the next video, I'm going to have to make my own squadron codes and serial numbers. But that's the end of this update to the Lancaster. So this is how I left the Lancaster at the end of the last video. And this is what it looks like now. I'm really pleased with the progress that I'm making on this. I'm going to try now to push through right to the very end. Hopefully there will be another update video soon. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye until next time.